Products.com has just released a CIS for the workforce 2540, 2530, and 2520. Very simple system to put in. Open it up. Bring the cartridges over. Take out the Epson cartridges. Unplug the printer. Now you'll be able to move the cartridges back and forth for hose travel. Very simple. You don't have to take off anything. You're not going to cut anything. It's going to be over in this position. Now take your time snapping these in. Be very careful taking them in and out because these print heads are, are very cheaply made. And uh, the first one, we damaged um, the little contact strings. So just take your time. Make sure it's snapped in. Okay? Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the hose bracket. It's going to go about from the edge here. We're going to put it about one inch in. And then you're going to put another hose bracket right about here. That's all you're going to need to do. So unplug the printer after you get it over. Take the cartridges out. Snap in our CIS cartridges. Here's our reset button. Now you're going to get a couple of error codes that are going to come up on the screen saying that you're not using cartridges. Just say OK and continue. Now I slide on the T bracket first because it's a lot easier. And we can remember what I said, one inch from the edge, just like that, lay it flat. You don't want to go up on the top, you want to lay it exactly with the edge here. So one inch, you're going to peel and stick it right there. And I just, just peeled it, I stuck the T-bracket down, I've got it all the way over to the right, and move it all the way over, and it's nice and straight. Then we're going to come out, put another hose bracket right there. You'll be able to shut the lid with no problem. Very simple system to put on. Just want to point something out here. There's a little sensing light right there. In the bottom of the Epson cartridges, it senses how much ink is in the cartridge. So you don't want to leave the lid open, have too much light hit that, otherwise the printer won't operate correctly. Okay, now I'm going to peel and stick one of the brackets right here. I'm going to give you another one that you're going to peel and stick right here. This way when the lid comes down, it's going to rest evenly. There won't be any uh, tipping on the lid when it comes down. So you're going to put one there and then the other one over here. Okay, now you're not going to crush that hose. You can still use the dock feeder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to balance our isobaric chamber in our ink tank. So before we open up the plugs in the top, I'm going to rock it. It's going to take all the ink out of the isobaric chamber. Go slow. You must do this. Okay, now you can open up the top and you can remove small air plugs in the back. Front ones are fill for filling. Back one, you need open to let the air into the isobaric chamber. Now, you don't want to get ink on your hands. Take a little paper towel and grab the plug and pull it up. A lot of times if that plug is hard to put back in, just take a little dish soap, very little. Put it on the edge and that'll cause that plug to go in so you don't have to fight with it. Take it out, just leave them out. Now when we close this, it's going to protect it from dust and light. There's a lot of companies that copy us, but they really can't duplicate us. So there, that's how it's going to be. There's our new backflow dampers. They also incorporate an anti-backflow. A lot of the backflow dampers don't have that. We've been building these for many years. So we build these the day you order it. We buy the parts and pieces, we fill it, and we put it together. Parts and pieces 
come from all over the world, but we build it right here in Florida. Okay, now we're going to plug it in and turn it on. Put it all the way over to the right. Okay, now we've had this system in previously, so you wouldn't get a warning code. But when you first get put it in, you're going to get warning codes from Epson, claiming that you're not using an Epson product, and they're right. This is an aftermarket product. We're going to watch the hose travel. Not too tight. If it's a little tight, you can let out a little hose. Let out a little bit. Go back and forth. Okay. Now I'm going to do a nozzle check. So I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to go down to maintenance. Okay. I'm going to go to nozzle check. Say okay. And press the um, copy button. And now it's going to print out a nozzle check. Now we offer this in pigmented ink or in our true color dye base ink. And now we'll take a look at it. Everything looks good. Tells you how many color pages, blank pages, sleep timer. So apparently this is set to go to sleep in 10 minutes. You can change that. And that's it. That's how simple it was to set up the new Epson 2540, 2530, and 2520. So now we're printing our test pattern. We're using our true coloring. This is a dye base. We also make it in pigmented. Because uh, the Epson printers. They use a Durabrite with a pigmented ink, but dye base is less expensive, but it's got to match the printer. In other words, the dye base has to be very good quality. That's how simple it was to set this up. Now, because these printers are very inexpensive, I don't expect them to last more than two years. Now when you get one or more colors that no longer will print, you'll get an error code. Ink cartridges cannot be recognized. So now you're going to go over and reset the ink levels. Now in the printer you're going to get, cannot recognize the following ink cartridges. It's going to show the magenta. Lift the lid. Say OK to proceed. Sheet's going to come out. Cartridges are going to come over to the replace cartridge position. And you're going to reach in and count 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and let go. And then go back and say OK. That's how you reset the ink level. Now, one more time, you're going to come back and it's going to say you have not installed genuine Epson cartridges. Say OK. Say OK. OK. This is their little way. And you've got to say yes, you're going to use them. And now you go back to start printing. Now it's going to show it's going to start printing. It's going to take a minute because it's going to clean the cartridges. See, that's the problem. It's going to go in there now and clean all the cartridges because 
the Epson printer thinks you just put a new Epson cartridge in. So it's not going to start up right away. So you've got to give it a minute or two or three. And then it'll start to print after it completely cleans it. This is the way that Epson just does nothing but waste ink. Okay, now it's starting to print. I'm going to cancel it. Now I'm going to the menu. I'm going to go to ink levels. Set my magenta back to full. Now the next one you're going to have to do is yellow, the cyan, and the black. It will not reset all the colors up because that's the Epson firmware.